G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags and welcome back to the 1968 campaign once again across the permit class submarine and once again we are intercepting a Soviet invasion force, a surface fleet that is currently heading towards the port of Narvik. Now if that sounds familiar to you, that's probably because this is the third or fourth fleet that has attempted to take the port of Narvik. I have no idea it's a Kotlin. I have no idea why they're continuing to try this. I have no idea if there's a vodka brewery in there that they really like, or if the girls around Narvik happen to have vodka-flavored nipples. I, I don't understand. Narvik is a port that is currently behind Allied lines. The Allied lines are far to the east of the position of Narvik, which means if this fleet was to manage to take the port of Narvik, they would be surrounded on three sides by land-based forces, the sea forces would be cut off by multiple submarines, and any aircraft or Soviet aircraft attempting to fly in to support the invasion of Narvik would have to cross blue-controlled airspace and deal with the interceptors and surface-to-air missiles that are associated with that. This is just a really bad place to try and invade. The only reason you would ever try and invade some place like Narvik is if there was a strategic resource at the port that you either wanted to deny the enemy to and didn't mind that you could only deny it to them for a very short period of time or it was the kind of place you would invade if you you know the port again had a strategic resource that you wanted access to but were happy to have access to it for a relatively short amount of time it doesn't it doesn't make sense as an invasion point but anyways that's just my opinion on it that's that's what we're going to fight at so what I'm doing right now is kind of trying to identify all the ships that are in this fleet. Obviously, being an invasion fleet, the transports are our primary targets, and that looks like we have another one identified. If we happen to sink the escorts, that's fantastic, but it is not a requirement of the mission. And we do have a bit of noise. We've got 77 decibels in the water. We're currently at 50 feet, although I'm going to bring myself up to periscope depth here in a second. So up by five feet, just so I can pop the periscope up and actually have a little bit of a look around and see if we can get a bit of a, uh, a master identification on most of these targets. We have no thermal layer and we have no duct, which is not horrible, but not great as well. It's going to make it harder to hide. Anyway, we are up, so... Looking at bearing zero Small is confirmed. Cashin is confirmed. Kotlin is confirmed. That may be it. Got 150. Alright. Now we most likely were picked up then. But I'm not too concerned about it. It's going to get the escorts to come over in my direction. So we should be able to deal with them. This is a little bit of an odd setup here. There's no real easy way for me to be able to sneak past the escorts to get access to the fleet. Without running the risk of one of the escorts detecting me. Now if any of them detect me, as soon as I'm detected, the entire fleet will turn and run. And that, that's going to pose problems. 
9.7 and closing at 30 knots. Cotland's rushing over to find out exactly what the hell that was. Hmm. Thank you. Alright, we'll check out what 07 is. I'm just watching the Kotlin and the Cashin here and seeing how they're going to react and seeing how the rest of this fleet reacts. God, it's way out there. Way out there. I'm going to make a guess that it's a surface ship. So, Sierra 7, another escort, or what is it? Yet another transport. So, four transports, two escorts, six ships in total as targets. We have four torpedo tubes, and only two of them can carry wires. And the problem is they're far too spread out at the moment. We've got laggers over here, we've got this guy up in the north. I mean, if his location is genuine, he's going to run as soon as we engage these targets down here in the south. And he's going to have a hell of a head start. It's going to take us a while to actually drag him in. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to wait. I'm just going to have to wait and see exactly how this spreads out and see how it groups up because... Yeah, we'll just go through the centre of it and hope that the uh, locations are a bit wrong. Seven seven. Yeah, I think. Right, we got the Komsomol up now. Actually, this might be it. We might have to take this. These things get much closer, they're going to detect us. So, tube. There. Put tube four. That should do it. Okay, so two, two, no, two fish in the water. We'll reload the tubes and start getting our 37s ready as surface runners. Um. I'm going to have to take the shot. We're going to have to take a shot at the escorts, and we're going to have to take a shot at the, um... Take a shot at the targets themselves. Anyways, those two in the water. Two in the water on wires, and I reckon we're going to make a swing at the Kotlin. If we can get them out nice and wide, we may be able to take on the Kotlin here. So far, nobody seems to be aware of what's just happened, which is good. On, torpedo room, two, two, ready. I, I'm, I have a bit of hope, although Komsomol's changing course here. But I was sort of hoping we're either going to hit Komsomol or we're going to hit one of the other transports, depending on how long they take to go through with that. But that's more a speculative shot anyway. If we happen to take out one of the, the transports, that's a bonus, but it's not what that shot is all about. So I'm going to send the torpedoes active a little bit earlier. 6.2 kiloyards to the Kotlin. Cashin seems to be almost adrift, not moving much at all. 
6.9 kiloyards. Torpedo 1 is about to go active. Torpedo 3 is also about to go active. Torpedo 3 is up. Run parallel to the other two. Get ahead of him. Actually, we're going to have to turn both torpedoes over at this point. Kotlin has fired. Kotlin's vector's good to intercept us. At 600 feet, we should be deep enough that the torpedo shouldn't detect us and I shouldn't have to maneuver too wildly. I hope. It'll really suck if I'm wrong here. Alright, so let's turn torpedo one in. Torpedo 3 can go across as well. I don't want this Kotlin getting any wise ideas about trying to just turn and run away. I want it to try and run between the torpedoes so I can drop on it from both sides. That seems to be aimed more at the torpedo, but they can still potentially get us. And the rest of them were in formation and they have turned around and started their run. So we've got to get this Kotlin as fast as possible, then we're going to rush over here and take out these ships. And one all the way out in the middle of nowhere. We'll have to work out about that too. Straight down the nose. Hit a one, you can begin to cross. This isn't looking bad. Kotlin may not be able to hear her at speed. No, she's starting to turn. She's starting to turn, but she's too late. Oh. Go active. No, 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 I'm not letting you do that. I'm not letting you do that. You are not escaping. Price for that, one of them's down. Alright. Second torpedo three. Uh, might be too late to turn this one away, unfortunately. Nope, we have managed to turn it away. Only just, but that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Okay, so Cashin is just going to aim torpedo three up this line. I hope she finds someone because we. We're going to break a wire here. Yeah, I'm going to have to break a wire here, otherwise we're going to be so far behind. So far we won't be able to actually catch them, and it looks like Soviet Torpedo has managed to acquire us after all, and is coming down to our depth. Alright, 
800 feet. Feet. It looks like the torpedo has turned away. Damage control is fine. All right. So we managed to may have managed to dodge the problem there at the moment. We're still fine here on depth two. A thousand feet is a long way down, but the uh, the permit should be clear. For at least 1300. So we're, we're getting close to crush depth, or to test depth rather, but uh, we're not there just yet. Ooh, worried about the torpedo's depth spiraling down. It's interesting, I haven't seen one ever change depth like that before. At least, not without a target. Odd. Alright, so we have Cashin coming in now. Cashin is... 3 kilo yards out, alright. Shit, we don't have any torpedoes loaded anyway. Damn it. Alright, that's not happening. load me one fast it's just over here somewhere I think there just over there right above us or almost I'd turn and have a crack at it, but I don't... Oh, well, I'm about to have a torpedo loaded up. We should we should probably have a shot from below. Just going to pass into the baffles fast. Make the turn. Make the turn, make the turn. Come on, load the torp. Don't have time for this, come on. Silent running when it reloading. There we go. Active and let's make it a surface runner. Current speed is five knots. Torpedoes away, short launch. Hard turn to activate. Let's get the shit out of the cashin. Unfortunately, it's not going to help my cause much here because that's not going to hit. towards the ship at the moment. Stop it. Active ping off. Soviet torpedo, I would love to say it'll pick it up, but it won't. 
it won't pick up the caching. Alright, turn away. Contacts. That's right, torpedo is still homing. Go active. Wire broke. That's fine. Torpedo was sent active before the wire broke. Now we can just get the hell out of here as quickly as we can and start trying to track down those transports because these are what we need to kill. Everything else is just a distraction. We can just hope the 37 will hit and if it doesn't it'll definitely give it something to play with for a little while while we're opening up the gap on it and uh, getting over to what we actually need to kill okay well something landed home I wonder if that was the Mark 37, the second Mark 37 we fired that we put on the run, or if that was one of the Mark 16s that we fired off in the first salvo, and it finally found something to connect with. It was probably the Mark 37, that was the one I put the Mark 37 on specifically, so... Not bad. Not bad. That's uh, one of the transports down, so now we only have three more left to go. And we're still getting pings from the Keshin, so the Keshin's still going. Our Mark 37 is valiantly trying to uh, take care of business, but um, it hasn't done it yet. I doubt it's going to, to be honest. Right. I'm watching all these ships sliding away. thinking, yep, this is going to be just like that mission I skipped. Surface running, sonar active, very good. Okay, 37 is away. Bloody annoying, the uh, 16 missed. So that should be enough to short activate. We're just going to make sure it runs straight once it activates, runs to the surface. And once it's sort of lined up, we should be able to let that one go. There we go. Okay, and it is still climbing for the surface. That is good. And the others are getting away. I'm not going to be happy until it grabs. Beautiful. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing with these two. This, this is actually the problem with this entire thing. These two, they don't go particularly fast. It only does about 15 knots. But remember, it started over here. And see how far it's managed to travel in just that time that it's had with a maximum speed of just 15. Now, the Komsomol does 20. The Komsomol is the same ship that caused me the issue on the previous video, the one that I skipped, where I, I had to chase a tanker 80 nautical miles across the ocean to finally wind the bloody thing in. That was a Komsomol. Now, it, it only does 20 knots, but I only do 29, so I'm only 9 knots faster. And my torpedoes only do about 27, 28. It's actually possible for a permit class to outrun its own torpedoes. So if a Komsomol gets a run on, just you know, give it seven, eight, nine, even 10 minutes while you're dealing with a couple of escorts and let it run for just that time, it'll open up a gap that's big enough that the speed that you can actually close on it, it will take forever to actually wind it in. Now, even at 15 knots, the other ones aren't so bad to catch, but it's still... Okay. So, that's him down.
yeah, it's it's still a pain in the ass. I mean, it's not a problem in the 1968 campaign. I mean, in this situation, I would have just surfaced the boat, or, you know, brought it up to 150 feet, and um, just popped off a couple of harpoons. And that would have been it. Four harpoons. Boom. But, uh, no. Um... Yeah, I'm going to have to go for the Komsomol first, just because it's the fastest. I have to wind it in first. And just hope that M6 stays close. Alright, so we're down to 1.5 kiloyards to target. Bloody lot of running around to get this. So, full reverse. Taking it to five knots. Five knots. Sure, Torpedo is away. Torpedo is active. And it is set to surface running, so it's climbing out. Should intercept the target relatively quickly. Gone. And there it is. Alright, so weapon is acquired. That is about all we need to do there. So now we can turn straight back around and accelerate out to flank. Uh, hey, accelerate out to flank. That's our fun done. Torpedo's locked on. That one's not going to miss, and that should be a kill shot on a Komsomol. It's highly unlikely that that will survive. Con sonar lost contact. Master eight, last bearing two, one. Con helm, steady course. Ready. Con maneuvering, making turns four, two. And boom. There it is. Hit port side, just next to the engine. Blew the ass out of the ship. Very nice. Okay, so that's going after the next one. In fact, on this one, we're going to go to periscope depth. And the reason... Yeah, I'm sure we are. The reason is I want to get up to the surface so I can pop my radar and actually have a look at what is going on on the on or near the surface where everybody is. So we can track down the next ones and find out where that Komsomol is at the moment because I have... Oh, sorry, the Keshin is at the moment because I have no idea where the hell it's gone. I've lost track of it completely. Now, I'm guessing M6 is going to be up around here moment unless it's heading back towards the Keshin if it's heading in a straight line it's going to wind up somewhere over here so all right actually all things considered I don't mind the Keshin knowing my location at the moment I'm not exactly trying to be sneaky about anything but I can go faster and have the radar up if I'm actually on the surface I can't maintain full speed on the surface of course but I can just do this them and radar up. Where are my pretties? Alright, troll is here. M6 has just disappeared. I 
contact with the troll is re-established. It's far enough away we can't see it on radar. That's not good. Remember, that thing only does 15 knots. And a 15 knots flank, in the time it's taken us to sink that Komsomol, it's managed to completely outrange our radar. So I'm just going to have to assume it's up here, and I'm going to have to run for as long as is necessary to see whether or not we can actually find the bloody thing again and how far we're going to have to travel. This is going to be a little longer than the other mission. They just scattered. Alright, it has taken us about, uh, according to this, 35 minutes, but we're finally in a position where we can get a torpedo off. A surface running, active sonar. 2.8 kilo yards to target. Speed is 10 knots, so we're good to fire, and we're going to fire this one short because I want the torpedo to activate. Of course we lost the wire. Fuck it, let's fire everything off. I just I just don't care anymore. This turned out to almost be a recreation of the mission that I didn't end up putting on channel the other day because it was that goddamn boring. Um, so, just to give you an idea of exactly how far we've had to travel in order to pull this off at this point. So we started the battle over here. This was our initial engagement here with the Kotlin and the Keshen. S7 was taken out by a torpedo volley which we fired off in hopes of taking out one of the escorts. That was a lucky shot. We then got over and took out M4. We then had to travel out 30 nautical miles to catch the Komsomol. Now we've had to travel all the way back to be able to catch M6. Now keep in mind that can only do 15 knots and it turned away around about here while we were tracking down the Komsomol. At even only 15 knots, half of our potential maximum speed, that's how far it was able to cross before we were finally able to catch it and get it into a position where we could potentially deploy weapons against it and actually destroy it. It only takes one ship to run to turn these missions into a total slog, simply because your weapon systems are not fast enough. You know, it's active, but it's going to snake. Now the problem is these things are that slow that um, when it's snaking like that, there's actually a good probability that it did it potentially not pick up that ship at all. It may actually get outrun, although it should still grab it. It should, but at minimum it's going to add another half as much time again, so... Like, we could fire another Mark 37 now and we would acquire the ship before the Mark that Mark 37 did. Hopefully she won't turn and these will run true. We'll get her with the Mark 16s. And they're looking really okay. They're looking very okay. She doesn't turn at all. Maybe not the lead. The second is looking right on the money there. Yeah, your weapon systems are that slow and your submarines that slow that if one of the ships gets a run, there's near nothing you can do about it. Well, nothing you can do about it in a short period of time anyway. Oh, that is not going to... Oh, no, there we go. Torpedo 1 hit. And Torpedo 2 hit, so she ate both. Nice. That's what you get for making me chase across half the friggin' map in order to actually track your ass down. Deserved every bit of it, too. 
But anyways, with the amount of map we've actually had to cover in order to complete this mission, I'm not going to bother going back. In fact, we're far enough away at, from the Cashin at this point that we should be able to just safely disengage as soon as our torpedo finally either self-destructs or acquires this wreck and kills itself. Whichever one of these happens first. So instead of going back to take out the Cashin, just because the amount of frustration I've already had at this, I'm actually going to let the Cashin sail back to its home port and I'm going to let the captain of the Cashin explain to the Soviet political officers exactly how he managed to lose not only a fellow warship in combat but also managed to lose an entire invasion force under his protection because that actually sounds kind of more cruel. Alright, so the Kotlin sunk, Cashin escaped, we know about that and the rest of the escort fleet was taken down, so hopefully that will still be enough. Great job, pleased to hear the expected invasion of Narvik Norway has been repelled. Await new orders. And it looks like we managed to win the Silver Star. Again, I think. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, Cold Waters will be continuing on until the 1968 campaign has been finally completed. Until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care.